Hello and welcome to our new iOS basic series. In this video series, we'll teach you how to use your iPhone or iPad. In today's lesson, we'll talk about what iOS is and how it's different from Android. Then we'll teach you some basic navigation, how to configure your home screen and change your settings. Let's get started. So what is iOS? iOS is the operating system for iPhones and iPads. In fact, the acronym iOS stands for iPhone iPad Operating System. An operating system, or OS, is a software that allows a computer to run. For example, many desktops and laptops have an operating system called Windows. Both iOS and Android are operating systems for smartphones and tablets. But how do you know you have an iOS device and not an Android? The answer is actually quite simple. iOS is only available for iPhones and iPads, which are made exclusively by Apple. So if you have a smartphone or a tablet made by Apple, then you have an iOS device. There's actually a specific version of iOS used by iPads, which is called iPadOS. It adds some special features like trackpad support and extra multitasking abilities, but is otherwise very similar to iOS. There have been many different versions of the iOS software over the years. As of the recording of this video, the most current version is iOS 14. Each version of iOS brings new features, while incremental updates, such as 14.2 or 14.2.1, usually bring smaller changes like security patches. That's why it's important to make sure your device is as up-to-date as possible. If you see you have a new software update, go to Settings, General, and Software Update. Make sure your device is connected to a charger before starting an update. Apple is known for supporting their devices for a very long time, but eventually your device will become too old to receive new versions of iOS. If you have a device like this, you might want to consider getting a new device. It's usually a good idea to wait until September before getting a new device because that's when Apple has their annual press event, in which they announce the current iPhone lineup. Even if you don't buy one of their brand new devices, the older devices are usually discounted. Let's look at an iOS device. For today's class, I'm going to be using an iPhone XS running on iOS 14. Please note that if you have a device that isn't on iOS 14, your screen might look very different from mine. That being said, let's go ahead and learn about basic navigation. There aren't many physical buttons on iPhones and iPads besides the power and the volume buttons. Some iPhones and iPads, like the iPhone SE, also have a physical home button. When pressed once, this button will bring you back to your home screen. When pressed twice, the home button will bring up a list of apps you currently have open. You could either switch between these apps or swipe away to close them. When held down, the home button will summon Siri, your AI assistant. We'll talk more about Siri in a different video. However, many of the more expensive iPhone and iPad models have begun getting rid of the home button. On these devices, you could swipe up from the bottom of the screen quickly to get out of an app or slowly to switch between apps. You can also press and hold the power button to talk to Siri. If you've turned on the option in the settings menu, you could also talk to Siri by saying, Hey Siri, how are you today? I'm fine, thanks. The home screen is the main screen that you'll see when you first boot up your device and navigate past the lock screen. Let's go over the different parts of the home screen. First, we have the status bar. This gives you important information about your device, such as the time, the strength of the cellular signal in your area, whether or not you are connected to Wi-Fi, and the battery level. Next, we have the notification center. Notifications are alerts from your device that will give you important messages about apps, system updates, and more. To view your notifications, slide your finger from the top of the screen down towards the bottom. It may take some practice. If you've done it correctly, you will see your notifications. Next, we have the control center. On older devices, you could get to the control center by swiping up from the bottom of the screen. But on newer devices, you can access it by swiping down from the right-hand corner of the screen. The control center contains shortcuts to settings or tools that you might need to access quickly, such as the flashlight, the camera, or the calculator. It also lets you toggle Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, and your cellular data on or off. There are many helpful shortcuts here, so be sure to familiarize yourself with this area. We'll show you how to customize these shortcuts later when we discuss the settings menu. And then we have apps and widgets. App stands for applications. These are small pieces of software that will help you with specific tasks on your device. For example, the Mail app will allow you to check your mail, while Maps can give you directions, and Facebook will allow you to check your Facebook account. There are many different types of apps on your device. 
Some apps are pre-installed, meaning they are already on your device when you first turn it on. If you don't see an app that you want on your device, you can download it from the App Store. Widgets are applications that work directly on the home screen. For example, the news widget shows you news stories, while the podcast widget lets you stop or resume a podcast. As of iOS 14, widgets are available on the home screen. Please note, however, that as of the recording of this video, widgets appear in a different location on iPadOS 14, and not all of the widgets that are available on iOS 14 will work on iPadOS. At the bottom of the screen is the favorites tray. This is where you can place all of your favorite apps for easy access. You can also swipe your finger across the screen to look through different pages of apps. Still not seeing an app that you're looking for? Check the app library. This is a new feature introduced in iOS 14. The app library contains a list of all the apps installed on your device. If an app is not available on your device, you can find it in the app library. You can get to the app library by swiping to the last page of the home screen. As of iOS 14, the home screen is more customizable than ever. Let's talk about how you can personalize your home screen so your device looks and feels the way you want it to. To add a new background, go to Settings and choose Wallpaper. Now tap Choose a New Wallpaper. From this menu, you could either choose a wallpaper that is already on the device or a wallpaper from your photos. To delete apps from your home screen, tap and hold the app you want to get rid of. A menu will pop up. Choose Remove App. Depending on the app, you will either get a choice to delete the app or just remove the app from the home screen. Choose wisely. Apps deleted from your device will be completely erased. If you accidentally erased an app that you want, you can re-download it from the App Store. To add apps from the App Library, swipe through the pages on your home screen until you reach the App Library. Here you can view a list of the apps currently installed on your device until you find the app you would like to add to the home screen. Tap and hold the app you want, then drag the app to the page on the home screen you would like it to go on. When you have put it in the place you want, tap Done in the top right corner to lock the apps in place. To add widgets, hold your finger down on the home screen and tap the plus sign in the top left corner. Then search for the widget you want or scroll down the list until you find the widget you are looking for. Tap the widget you're interested in, then look through the different display options. Once you have decided, choose Add Widget. The widget will drop onto the screen. Drag it to the location you want it to go and tap Done in the top right corner. To rearrange the home screen, looking to reorder the apps and widgets on your home screen? Tap and hold an app until you get a menu. Now choose Edit Home Screen. If done correctly, all of the apps and widgets on the screen will start wiggling. Now you can hold and drag whatever app or widget you want to a new location. To drag it to a different screen, hold and drag it to the end of the page. It will automatically switch pages. If you want to put an app in a folder with another app, just drag the app on top of another app to create a folder. You can tap the folder's name to rename it. To take an app out of a folder, just drag it out and it'll return to the home screen. If you drag every app that is in a folder out of a folder, the folder will disappear. Moving apps and widgets can be a little tricky, especially when they don't move to the place you want them to. It can take a few tries to get it right, so be patient. Once you've had your device for a while, you may want to change some of the settings. To do this, just go to the Settings app. It looks like this. Let's take a look at some of the most important settings on your device and how to change them. Apple ID and iCloud. Since Apple makes iPhones and iPads, your Apple account is essential to controlling your device. It usually consists of an email and a password that is used to manage your iCloud account, download apps from the App Store, and log into Apple services. You can control settings related to your Apple account at the area with your name at the top of the settings menu. From this menu, you can update your contact information, change your password, manage your payment options, and app subscriptions. From this area, you can also control your iCloud settings. iCloud is a service that allows you to back up your phone and sync it with other Apple devices. Here you can view your storage. Tap Manage Storage to see what is taking up the most space. You get 5 gigabytes for free, but if you need more storage, tap Change Your Storage Plan to pick the right plan for you. Connecting to Wi-Fi. To connect to Wi-Fi, tap on Wi-Fi in the Settings menu. Then choose your Wi-Fi network from the list. Remember that some networks may require a password. Bluetooth. To connect to Bluetooth, tap Bluetooth on the Settings menu. Depending on the device you're connecting, you may need to put the device in pairing mode for it to show up on the list. Once you see your device, tap on it to connect it. Notifications. In Notifications, you can choose what apps are allowed to send you notifications. 
Tap notifications and then tap on an app from the list to set its notification style or to turn it off entirely. This is really helpful if you have a lot of notifications popping up for games or social media apps. Sounds. Tap sounds in the settings menu to adjust your volume and select a new ringtone for your device. General. General is one of the most important areas in the settings menu. Tap general to see the full list of options. A few I would recommend looking at are about, software update, and storage. About device. This section will tell you about your device, including what version of iOS you are currently running, as well as the device's model name, serial number, and other important information. Software update. In software update, you can update your iOS software. Before doing an update, you want to have your device sufficiently charged or connect to a charger and be connected to the internet. Some updates are quick, while others are very long, so be patient. Storage. In storage, you can see how much space you've used on your device. Unlike some Android devices, iPhones and iPads only have a finite amount of space that can't be expanded with an SD card. So if your device is full, you will not be able to download new apps or take new pictures and videos. It's a good idea to delete things you don't use or use a cloud storage service like iCloud. Control Center. The Control Center allows you to customize what shortcuts are available in the Control Center. If there's something you would like to access quickly, like the camera or the flashlight, make sure it's on the list of included controls. If it isn't, scroll down until you see the shortcut you want and tap the green plus sign next to it. Display and brightness. This allows you to change important settings like how bright the screen is, how long it stays on for, and when the blue light filter is activated. On devices with newer versions of iOS, this is also where you could toggle between light and dark mode. Light mode gives you a white screen with black text, and dark mode gives you a dark screen with white or gray text. If you can't decide, you can choose automatic to have your phone automatically shift between the two modes at different times of the day. Apps. Scrolling to the bottom of the settings menu will show you settings for each of your individual apps. Tap on an app to control its settings. Each app is different, so not all of them will have the same settings to control. That's it for our first iOS lesson. Keep an eye out for our next video in which we'll be talking about apps and downloading new apps from the App Store. Thank you for watching and have a wonderful rest of the day. Bye.